As eight meter waves and 70 knot winds slam against the rig, it collides with the Christmas tree and a mist of gas spews into the air. Bethlehem Steel was a prominent American steelmaking and shipbuilding company based in Pennsylvania. They played a crucial role in constructing iconic structures like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Chrysler Building. During the 1980s, offshore oil fields were becoming critical sources of crude oil, with regions like the Gulf of Mexico emerging as hubs for oil production. Countries like Mexico invested heavily in offshore platforms to capitalize on these reserves. As a steel manufacturer and shipbuilder, Bethlehem Steel was strategically well-placed to take advantage of the growing demand for offshore oil exploration and production facilities. The company forged a partnership with Perforadora Central, a Mexican drilling company providing exploratory and development drilling services primarily for Petroleos Mexicanos, more commonly known as Pemex. Petroleos Mexicanos, or Pemex, is Mexico's national oil company and a top global oil field producer. They oversee all aspects of the oil and gas industry in Mexico, including exploration, production, refining, and distribution. In 1982, Bethlehem Steel builds the Usumachinta Jackup Rig in Singapore. It's a mat-supported jackup rig, which is a mobile platform that can be deployed in shallow waters. The hull is built like a floating barge, which allows the rig to be transported to drilling sites by tugs. Once the rig is in the right location, it's stabilized by a large flat-bottomed mat foundation that rests on the seafloor to provide a base for the legs to anchor, specifically designed for the soft seabeds in the Gulf of Mexico. The platform's hull is rectangular, measuring 65 meters long and 50 meters wide, divided into areas for drilling operations, crew accommodation, and machinery. It has three truss-style jack-up legs built using a framework of interconnecting steel beams that form a triangular geometric structure that distributes stress evenly, making the legs both strong and lightweight. The legs measure 122 meters, capable of operating in water 91 meters deep while keeping the platform stable above the waterline. The hull is jacked up on the legs to lift the platform above wave action during operations. The rig has a cantilever deck that extends outward to operate over another stationary platform. This setup allows Usumachinta to rapidly extend the production capabilities of a fixed platform by drilling new wells in a productive reservoir. Usumachinta has accommodation for 81 crew of engineers, drillers, and support staff. Life rafts and lifeboats are mounted on the sides of the hull for quick deployment in an emergency, alongside the emergency exits, muster stations, and fire control equipment which are visible on the deck. After its construction, Usumachinta is deployed to support various operations across Mexico's offshore fields. Its primary role is to drill new wells and provide maintenance support for existing platforms. In early October 2007, Pemex contracts the Usumachinta Jackup Rig to drill the CAB 103 well in the Bay of Campeche, located on the southern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. The Bay of Campeche is one of the most productive oil fields in the world, and offshore platforms in the area produce 66% of Mexico's crude oil output. It's a critical area for Mexico's petroleum industry, and Pemex extracts significant volumes of oil and natural gas from the region. The CAB 103 well is a project that will be drilled next to the CAB 101 platform, which is already in place, pumping oil and gas from two wells, CAB 101 and CAB 121. The CAB 101 platform is a sea pony type light production platform, which is a compact offshore structure designed to extract oil in relatively shallow waters. It's engineered to be a simple and efficient rig for locations where full-scale production platforms are excessive or impractical. The CAB 101 platform rests on a steel jacket structure that's securely anchored to the seabed. The deck houses essential oil and gas production equipment, including the production valve trees, blowout preventers, and basic processing equipment for separating oil, gas, and water. 
a production valve tree, sometimes called a Christmas tree, is an assembly of valves, gauges, and chokes mounted on the wellhead. It's a bit like a traffic junction to control and regulate the flow of oil, gas, and water coming up from the well. It's called a Christmas tree because it looks like a decorated tree. It has a large master valve located at the bottom of the tree closest to the wellhead to control the overall flow of hydrocarbons from the well or completely shut off production if needed. Wing valves are located on either side of the tree. One wing valve flows out of the well to the production flow line, directing hydrocarbons to the processing facilities. Another wing valve connects to a kill line to pump heavy fluids into the well to suppress the pressure during maintenance. There's a valve at the top of the tree which provides access to the well bore, so engineers can send tools down the line if needed. And a choke valve to regulate the flow rates of hydrocarbons which balances a safe pressure in the production facility and the optimal pressure in the reservoir. And the Christmas tree is decorated with pressure gauges and sensors that monitor well pressure, temperature and flow rate. On the 21st of October 2007, Usama Chinta is towed to the CAB 101 platform and the crew prepare for their drilling operations. The three truss legs are lowered to anchor the platform to the seabed and position the rig. The hull is raised above the waterline, out of reach of waves and swell. Once it's in position and stabilized, the cantilever deck is extended toward the CAB 101 platform. The cantilever deck is the central drilling operation, with the drilling derrick, drawworks, and a series of high-powered motors that rotate and lower the drill string. The two cranes on the Usuma Chinta jack-up rig are mounted on sturdy pedestals, securely fixed to the deck to handle the heavy lifting of the offshore drilling operations, designed to withstand the relentless saltwater environment. The booms stretch 30 to 50 meters and provide the reach needed to lift heavy equipment from supply vessels or support the drilling operations on the cantilever deck. Each crane can rotate 360 degrees, which enables the operators to move loads across different parts of the rig without repositioning the crane itself. The operator's cabin, perched halfway up the structure, gives a clear view of the deck. On the 22nd of October, the next day, the drilling operations get underway. The cranes swing into action, transferring drill pipes and other heavy equipment from supply vessels to the cantilever deck. While the deck is extended over the CAB 101 platform, the drill team takes the first steps to drill the CAB 103 well. The cranes lift and position heavy casing pipes into the well bore. This casing stabilizes the shallow part of the borehole and prevents loose sediment from collapsing into the well. Once the borehole reaches its specified depth, a larger steel pipe called the surface casing is inserted into the hole. Surface casing is cemented in place to provide additional stability and prevent fluids from migrating between underground layers. The rig operates around the clock with the teams working in shifts. Control rooms on the rig monitor the drilling progress, ensuring that pressures and depths are maintained within safe parameters. On the morning of the 23rd of October, a powerful cold front sweeps through the region, bringing winds up to 70 knots and towering waves eight meters high. The storm is so severe that eight major ports in the Gulf of Mexico are forced to close. Carlos Morales, Pemex's Director of Exploration and Production, describes it as extreme weather conditions we've never registered before. As the storm intensifies, Usama Chinta starts to sway in the strong winds and relentless waves. The rig's 122-meter legs struggle to stabilize the platform against the forces of the storm. The cantilever deck, which is extended over the CAB 101 platform during drilling operations, swings dangerously close to its neighboring oil rig. The 8-meter waves steadily build and the swell pushes against the oil rig's legs. Waves break over the deck and the cranes act like sails catching the wind. At 1200, the cantilever deck collides with the production valve on the CAB 101 platform. The impact ruptures key safety valves, creating an immediate and uncontrolled leak of oil and gas. The crew on board Usama Chinta move quickly to assess the damage. Engineers and operators on the platform quickly establish the severity of the situation. 
the damaged production valve tree can't regulate pressure and the flow of hydrocarbons rapidly escalates. They try to close the subsea safety valves on wells cab 101 and 121, but they've been damaged by the collision. They're able to slow the leak, but can't stop the oil and gas spraying out from the damaged Christmas tree. By 1420, a mist of gas surrounds the rig. Even the high winds aren't enough to clear the volatile cloud pouring out from the ocean. At 15.35, the crew initiates an emergency evacuation order in some of the worst sea conditions imaginable. This order is a directive issued during critical situations to make sure personnel leave a hazardous area. Rescue teams, vessels and helicopters are notified to assist in the evacuation and recovery efforts. The rig's lifeboats and life rafts are deployed. Two enclosed lifeboats take 73 people, and the rest of the crew take inflatable life rafts. The first lifeboat starts taking on water immediately after it's deployed and eventually capsizes. The second lifeboat is struck by a massive wave trapping several people inside, and the life rafts break apart in the force of the waves, throwing its occupants into the sea. Rescue efforts are quickly mobilized and Pemex dispatches multiple vessels. The Morrison Tide is an offshore support vessel that also assists in handling emergencies. Helping them are six Pemex helicopters and two Mexican Navy helicopters. The helicopters search the area for men in the water, focusing on areas where survivors are likely to have drifted in the currents and wind. They provide a bird's eye view of the sea and coordinate with the vessels below. The next day, almost 24 hours after the crew abandoned the rig, the helicopters spot several survivors clinging to overturned lifeboats, floating debris and remnants of life rafts. The rescue vessels immediately head to their location and pull them on board using rescue nets. The crew suffer from exposure to cold water, injuries from capsizing lifeboats and oil contamination from the surrounding spill. By the end of the operation, 58 survivors are successfully rescued. Oil and gas continues to spew from the CAB 101 platform. The damaged production valve tree leaks at a rate of over 442 barrels of oil per day. Control teams try to shut the subsea valves, but because they were damaged in the collision, the team aren't able to completely shut them off. Oil slicks form on the surface of the ocean and spread across the Bay of Campeche. A small team of engineers on the platform inject heavy drilling mud into the wellbore to counteract the pressure of the escaping hydrocarbons. Then they pump cement into the well to form a solid plug, but because of the damage to the well and the extreme weather conditions, the plug doesn't work. On the 13th of November, almost two and a half weeks later, a spark ignites the leaking gas and oil, triggering a massive fire on Usuma Chinta. Flames engulf the rig and spread rapidly across the structure. Emergency response teams start to fight the fire using onboard fire suppression systems and support vessels with water cannons, and within 24 hours, the fire is extinguished. A week after the first fire, on the 20th of November, a second fire erupts on Usumachinta. The derrick and the cantilever deck collapse, damaging the bridge connecting K101 to Usumachinta. Because the rig is partially destroyed, the emergency response teams find it difficult to contain the fire and plug the well. Pemex decide to try and dismantle the drilling tower and cantilever deck on Usumachinta in order to separate the two rigs, which should help firefighters extinguish the flames on Usumachinta and improve access to the wells on CAV 101 so that they can be plugged. The fire is put out the same day with no injuries. With improved access after dismantling the cantilever deck and drill tower, the teams are able to inject more heavy drilling mud into the wells and suppress the flow of hydrocarbons. Then they pump cement into the well bore to create a permanent seal. On the 14th of December, about 50 days after the accident, the well is contained. 
22 people died in the accident from injuries and drowning. The families of the deceased workers filed lawsuits against Pemex and Perforadora Central for negligence in safety protocols and emergency response measures. Pemex provided compensation to the families of the 22 workers who lost their lives, but the exact amounts weren't made public. After the disaster, Pemex and the Mexican government implemented stricter regulations for offshore oil operations to improve stability in jack-up rigs, increase the distance between platforms, upgrades to lifeboats, and the use of mandatory weather monitoring systems so that crew can be notified before conditions become unmanageable and evacuate to safety. Mm -hmm.